Nityanandam, my name is Ma Nitya Muktika Nanda. Um, I'm a full-time volunteer at the uh, temple in Seattle that was established by Swami. And I'm a tax preparer, um, a housewife, and I, I'm a karate kid, as somebody told me. And, uh, and I just enjoy whatever I do every moment. So tell us about your husband. Um, so we met Swami in the year 2009. My husband and I met Swami. My husband and I met Swami in 2009 um, in April when he had come to Seattle. And um, we were asked to attend the course, um, the discourse that he was going to give uh, by my brother-in-law. He said, just come and meet him. Um, you'll know what it is for yourself. And we really actually um, went there out of curiosity. Um, it was interesting. We personally, I felt when I looked up and I met Swami and I had his darshan, um, it felt very nice, felt extremely relaxing. And I felt there was something about me that he had stirred, something he said that made me even more curious um, to seek out and see what's happening. Okay, so here's what you're, here's what I would like for you to focus on saying what you need to say in one or two sentences. Okay. So it has to be really, have a lot of crunchiness. Okay. So you have to say something like, uh, you know, my husband came back from Inner Awakening. And, Got it. You know, before the, he was doing this with the kids and, the, and he was upset and scratchy and he would blow the horn in traffic. And then all of a sudden when he came back, he was like super, you know, just really think of some specific <laughs> things that you noticed before and after. Okay. Yeah, so um, after we met Swami in 2009 in April, uh, my husband kind of got more connected. He, he felt he had to do the courses, he had to know more. Um, he was more spiritually inclined than me. Um, I was just a curious onlooker at first, just wondering what's going on. Um, as soon as he met Swami, he decided to do a few more courses and he decided, you know what, Inner Awakening is for me. And so my husband immediately booked his tickets and went to the Inner Awakening that was happening in June of 2009. Um, he, was a, he was actually quite a gentle person, um, no big hang-ups. Uh, but I think as a normal human being, um, there were a lot of little, little uh, frustrations, um, wanting to multitask, wanting to be multidimensional but uh, you know, not being able to, he would say, I need to finish one thing first and then I get to the other one. Um, so, and I was the kind of person who would say, okay, let's get started, let's keep doing. Um, let's finish one thing after another. So I was an early morning person and he was a late night person. So we were kind of opposites. Um, so he went to Inner Awakening and when he came back, there was something so different something really, really fundamentally different about him. Um, he had quietened down. Um, he was even more intense. And there was something about him that said he's not what he was before. Um, and that made a big difference. I don't think we really verbalized it a lot between the two of us, but we just felt a much more um, intense and a deepening of our relationship um, when he came back. The approach towards family, the approach towards work, um, being able to take up challenges and just, you know, throw yourself into anything that comes your way. That was him after um, 2009, June IA. Talk a little bit about your educational background because it's very interesting for the viewers. Sure. So I'm actually a, an accountant um, and I prepare taxes for people. Taxes are my passion. Um, I love playing with numbers and my husband's a PhD in um, electronics, electrical engineering. 
Um, he was actually involved, I mean, he, he does work in uh, voice recognition. That's where he started. And uh, we used to live in New Jersey, and then we moved to um, Seattle, where he started working in Microsoft. Um, that's the background about us. Name the university you both attended. Both of us attended Rutgers University in uh, New Jersey. It's, uh, it was a fantastic school, a great place. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed whatever we did, um, school and the ambiance, the location. Talk about as a professional person who has a high level of education. You know what kind of what, what are you getting out of an inner awakening? You know you're already smart, so what are you getting? I'm getting a new perspective in life. Um, I was very very logical. I was very methodical, very systematic, and I used to plan six months to a year in advance for anything and everything I would do. Everything had to be in order concise and planned and uh, I had a little bit of trouble actually um, if something didn't work according to my plan it would just throw me off um, it took me a while to get back into that and that I think is the biggest change in both of us being able to accept being able to live in the moment really really understanding that life just comes to you you take it and you do what you need to do, stretching and making the best of it. I think that worked a lot. And we kind of gelled together really well, complemented each other um, when this happened. And I think IA is truly the one that made it happen for us. Um, Swami being there, um, I would say that if anything, Swami completes us. And talk about, um what is Swami? Explain what an enlightened avatar and why everybody needs to have one in their life. How can I put it in words? <laughs> He's a phenomenon. Um, He's an experience. He is beyond logic. He is beyond normal um, understanding. You have to let go of all preconceived notions, idea of framing um, having prejudice, having judgmental attitudes, biases. You just have to drop everything to really understand or even begin to understand. I wouldn't say we'd really understand because he's so vast that I think we're just, I would say preschool, probably at a preschool level of understanding him right now. Um, but just the glimpse of that, that you get from him, is enough to just let you understand that life has a lot more to offer and we are just limiting factors for ourselves. Um, if there's anything, he just helps you be free, liberated, to do anything and everything that you choose to do. Any patterns, specific patterns you've had that have melted down? Um, I've had quite a few patterns. One of the biggest things is um, letting, you know, allowing people to express themselves, allowing people to radiate their inner potential and not being the one to constantly tell people what to do. Um, that's what I am now. What I was before was me telling people what to do, me guiding people all the time, thinking that I need to be there thinking that I need to plan for things and things have to go according to what I said. Um, from that, I think I've come 180 degrees and uh, I, I flow and I let others flow. And I realize that when I'm doing that, I'm growing, first of all. I'm listening, I'm listening to myself, I'm listening to others. And I understand that everybody, anybody and everybody has a role to play in each other's life. What about the transformation programs? Why is this one different from, say, you know, some regular other transformation program? Frankly, I don't think I will be able to answer that because my first guru has been Swami, and I've not looked into anybody else ever since. Um, I am so fulfilled, I'm so content and happy that I've not I've not looked at anybody else. But I do see just one thing. The transformation that we get here is intense, it is deep, 
and it really changes life. It is not superficial. It is not something that stays with you for some time and then you, know, you drift off to doing something else. Um, it's something that you realize you truly believe and it helps you believe in yourself. And that's what I've gotten. I've, I don't think I've talked a whole lot in front of the camera before this. Um, five years back, I wouldn't be seen near a camera. Uh, but something changed because I felt whatever was inside me, I can be that. Whatever it is, that's what I am. And I know I can express it in front of people. I know that it is beyond judging. I know that I can just be. So what if, can you just use the word and say, completion is blah, blah, blah? Completion is completely being yourself, being with yourself and being with others as they are in their growing process, in their life, at their levels. Um, you just being at peace with everything and taking yourself one notch higher. Um, and as like Swami said, it is being in tune, listening to yourself and listening to others. Being in perfect listening is what I would say completion is. Anything else you want to say? Um, I just want to say that if there are no excuses, there are no reasons um, to make life better. If you, if you really think you being better is important in life, that it will make a difference for you and for your family, for your friends, for the community, and you really seek to do something for everyone, come to Inner Awakening. I guarantee you, you will not be the same person who's going back home. You'll be something phenomenally different and you will make the difference in somebody else's life.